Have you been hearing education talk about the Common Core, standards-based grading, and rubrics? Are you confused? Do you wish you could hear an explanation in simple terms? Do you trust this bunch to give you some info? We'll give you the scoop in our own fifth grade way. Let's begin with the question. What is the Common Core, otherwise known as the Kansas College and Career Ready Standards? Simply put, they are a set of English language arts and math standards commonly adopted by 45 states, including Kansas. The way our teacher explains it, we can move from Riley to Graber and Hutchinson. Or from Nebraska to Kansas in the United States, and fifth graders would be held accountable for the same math and English language arts standards. These standards aren't just set skills that need to be memorized. Imagine this. Our teachers will actually expect us to apply our knowledge by summarizing, comparing, explaining, offering evidence, and writing about what we have read or math concepts we've learned. These are skills that employers find very valuable in the real world. It won't be long before we are out there. New tests will probably not consist entirely of multiple choice answers. We'll have to think deeper and offer explanations for our answers. Here are three examples of fifth grade Common Core English language arts standards. I can quote accurately from a text when explaining what the text says explicitly and when drawing inferences from the text. Wow! I can determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in, in a text, including figurative language such as similes and metaphors. Whoa, dude! I can analyze multiple accounts of the same topic, noting similarities and differences in the point of view they represent. Oh man, totally rad! Are you impressed? Are you worried about whether we can do it? Of course we can. In fact, we are already on our way with the help of supportive teachers, administrators, and you, our parents. Think the new math standards are going to be a walk in the park? Think again. Check out these typical fifth grade math problems. How much chocolate will each person get if three people share half a pound of chocolate equally? Oh, man. If nine people want to share a 50-pound sack of rice equally by weight, how many pounds of rice should each person get? Jeepers creepers! In other words, we will have to learn to compute numbers fluently so that we can easily solve the word problems. If your head is hurting right now, not to worry. With excellent instruction and support from our parents, we can do this. We have another bit of news. Our school district is going to a standards-based system of grading. No more A's, B's, C's, and D's that give you one letter grade for each subject. Hooray! We are saying no to the zero and averaging grading systems as well. Teachers will hold us accountable for all our work. No slacking allowed. Can you imagine having a fifth grade student get an A in math and not knowing how to so accurately subtract numbers? Well, when using an averaging system, things like that sometimes really happen. Trust us, our teacher is old, a genuine antique, and she says it happens. Now, when you come to conferences, you will get a rubric score based on each standard we are studying. On top of that, we will be given many opportunities to improve on a standard before a final grade for that standard is given. The grade will be based on the most recent performance on that skill, not an average of all of our practices. When I start a skill, I might score a 1 on the rubric, meaning I need lots of work. Oops. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. We fixed it. <laughs> we got it. Okay, one second. Eventually, I want to score a three on the rubric to show you that I am a proficient on that math, on that fifth grade skill. If I were to score a four on the rubric, well, that would mean that I am applying and extending the knowledge beyond my grade level. Please, please, please don't think that ones, twos, three, and threes, and fours are the same as A's, B's, C's, and D's, because they aren't. Our rubric or will reflect on our most current ability level on that standard. A final rubric, rubric score of three is awesome. A four will be rare. It means work beyond grade level. Here's a sample of a fifth grade rubric for one standard. Let's say the standard is determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in a text including figurative language such as metaphors and similes. Whoa! At a rubric score of one, I can find a simile in a story. At a rubric score of two, I can find a simile 
I can find a simile and a metaphor in a story. At a rubric score of three, I can determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in a story, including both similes and metaphors. At a rubric score of four, I can apply similes and metaphors in my speaking and writing. Our standard base grade report will include a section about responsibility. In the real world, I know I will be expected to do my work in a timely manner. If I am constantly late with my schoolwork, that problem will be noted in the behavior section of my grade. Did you know that our teachers are learning this new process as well? They are working hard to give you valuable information about your precious child. Have we helped you to understand standards-based grading rubrics in the Kansas College and Career Ready Standards a little bit better? Let's see. Then maybe, just maybe, you're improving your rubric score on your understanding of these concepts. If you're making progress, then we'll give you a two. You are well on your way to understanding these important changes. And to think, you trusted this bunch. Thanks! And now, we would like to give credit where credit is due. Thanks to our Graber Site Council and our principal, Mrs. McFadden. During a Site Council meeting, Mrs. McFadden presented the many important aspects of standard-based grading rubrics and the Common Core. The parents on the Site Council wanted all parents to understand the changes taking place in education. They asked for a simple explanation. They wanted something that parents could watch while waiting for their parent-teacher conference to begin. Mrs. McFadden said, The parents of Graber want it. We will provide it. That's just how our principal does things. And so, Mrs. Corcoran's class created this product. Mrs. Riley helped us with adding the sound in only about 30 minutes time. She is the goddess of technology. Jayla took all of the goofy pictures. Thanks to the kids in room 120 who read with expression and posed for the pictures. Thanks to them, Mrs. Corcoran's job is a blessing every second of the day. Well, almost every second of the day. We're really only a three on the perfection rubric. Wait, I don't think there is a perfection rubric. Is there? I don't think so either. <sighs> That's a relief.